Meticulous but steady progress in the cleanup process of the key bridge. Nearly 1,100 tons of steel have been removed so far. That's five times the weight of the Statue of Liberty. Hello, everybody. I'm Rick Ritter. Welcome to WJZ's All Local News at 6. As today marks three weeks since the tragedy at the key bridge. And tonight, both salvage and recovery efforts continue as teams are still searching for the bodies of two workers. Let's go now live. The Paul Guests are on your corner in Dundalk tonight with more on a restored bipartisan call now to action to continue these efforts. Mm -hmm. Paul, good evening. Hi, Rick. Yeah, we have seen significant progress. Good evening to you on removing parts of this bridge. A 300 ton portion of the bridge was removed this afternoon from the bridge site. We are told they are still on pace to open a temporary channel 35 feet deep by the end of April. With the recovery Sunday of a fourth victim, two construction workers remain missing and presumed dead. State officials reiterated Tuesday the focus on recovering the final two victims presumed dead in the Keybridge debris and clearing the channel for ship traffic. Bringing closure to these families remains a priority. Official Sunday recovered the body of a fourth victim and identified him Monday. His identity kept private for now at the request of the family. Mayor Brandon Scott says Baltimore City's Keybridge Victims Fund has now raised more than $650,000. Our identity is our, our, our port. We're a port city. Governor Moore was also flanked by former Governor Bob Ehrlich and several other Maryland Republicans in a bipartisan push for funding a new bridge. This is not a Republican crisis. This is not a Democratic crisis. This isn't only a Maryland crisis. This is a national crisis. This just doesn't affect just Baltimore or Dundalk or Maryland. It affects Chicago. It affects Detroit. It affects Florida and other states. The House Freedom Caucus, made up of dozens of Republicans, this month laid out several demands before considering a bill to pay for a new bridge. Among them, a call for funding to wait until liability with foreign shipping companies is sorted out, and the Biden administration to lift a pause on liquefied natural gas export terminals. Meanwhile, crews have meticulously moved more than 1,100 tons of steel so far and 40 containers from the dolly. There will be no need to remove every single container from the dolly. The, the point is removing enough that as we remove the truss from the dolly and that you can have a refloating of the vessel. The Coast Guard gave recreational vessels Tuesday limited access to a temporary channel. It allows some boats trapped the past three weeks to pass the salvage site. And the Coast Guard we're looking now is opening up a temporary channel here again on the east side of the Patapsco. It'll be open for a limited time, only through 7 o'clock for recreational boaters. Governor Moore, meanwhile, says he will be in D.C. later this week to lobby members of Congress for that federal funding to rebuild the bridge. He says any and all members of Congress are welcome here in Maryland to view this site firsthand. We are reporting live in Dundalk at 6 tonight. I'm Paul Gessler for WJZ. A lot of moving parts, but Paul Gessler is all over it. Paul, thank you. There are a number of resources being offered all across the state for those impacted by the Key Bridge collapse. As we've been telling you, WJZ and the United Way of Central Maryland continuing our efforts to help. And if you'd like to partner with us, scan that QR code right there on the right side of your screen or head to our website.